So the title of my talk is Nice to Meet You, How I Made Friends in the Community and So Can You. Um, this talk is not technical. There's a lot of great technical talks going on here this weekend. My talk's not technical. My talk's kind of um, evangelical in nature is the way I would uh, position it. Um, it's about my journey to get to this spot today and uh, where hopefully the rest of the journey will go. Oops. Go back. Press on the button. So here's the slide. Who am I? Uh, I did a talk in Cleveland. I called this the Who the Hell Am I Guy? Who the Hell Am I? But, um, uh, my Twitter handle is uh, at Wolflight, uh, James Siegel. Um, I've been programming computers, building computers, tearing them apart since I was around 14. And that was quite a long time ago. Um, I was a CCDs competitor at Ivy Tech Northeast. Um, I'm currently a systems administrator at a great company, medical informatics engineering. I have some alphabets and certs. I'll get to them at the end. They're not really important at this point. Um, I currently also have a small consultancy that I've been working on for eight years, nine years. Um, and I'm an inspiring InfoSec professional and evangelist. So pretty much everybody in our community is an introvert. It's our nature. We're geeks, we're nerds, or whatever the rest of the public wants to call us. We're ten we tend to be introverts. Um, we spend a lot of our time um, but for the most part alone, sitting in our machines, maybe in a dark room, because that's the way the media wants to portray us. Um, and if it wasn't for some key people in this community, I would be the guy in the back, not really paying attention and not being involved. Yeah, there's not a guy in the back. Um, <laughs> um, al along the way, I, I did some great things. Um, I got out of the Marine Corps. I mean, I got out of high school after taking tons of programming class in high school, that's what I thought I was going to do. Uh, went into the Marine Corps, got out of the Marine Corps, didn't really know what I was going to do, did some framing, did some construction, did a lot of warehousing, got into distribution, spent almost eight years working for a distribution company, went to all, everywhere else, went around the country. The distribution company sent me California, Minneapolis, Fort Wayne, Cincinnati, uh, Phoenix. Everywhere I went, I never went anywhere without a computer. And this is pre-internet days. This is driving around with a big box and a monitor and a modem. In every city I went to, I'd be war dialing to find the local BBSs. Trying to stay in touch with the community at the time. You know, being the constant geek that I've never stopped being. Then, in 1996, um, my ex at the time, uh, she didn't like Phoenix, which is where I was currently at. And I'm like, okay, well, this company's bounced me all around the country. If I tell them I don't want to be here, I'm kind of going to be out of work. Question. You said your ex is the time. Is she not your ex anymore? Well, she is my ex. But I mean, <laughs> from, from that time of my life. He's going through a couple. <laughs> so anyway, um, she told me, well, you can certainly get a job in Port Wayne. You know? So we went back to Indiana, and I got a job in Port Wayne Foundry, and I spent 13 years there in the quality department. Um, and the great thing about doing quality is you learn to do some really heavy thinking about why things happen, where they happen, and how to fix them. And along the way, I saved the company quite a bit of money, um, saving one part from being damaged um, or one, one defect from being in a casting may have meant the difference between uh, actually being able to sell a product and making anywhere from 2 to $3 on the product or throwing that product away and losing all the man hours and labor and effort to went in making. So there's a swing there, maybe two to three dollars profit on the, the part to maybe a loss of 20 to 30. But in um, 2009, the foundry ceased to exist. And so I had to reinvent myself. And I thought, what am I gonna do? Well, why don't I just do what I'm already doing anyway for fun? So, that slide didn't work. Oh, we go back to fun. Before the foundry quit, and uh, yeah, that was kind of a bad time all around, um, I wasn't just banging on boxes. I was gaming with a great bunch of guys, um, the time zone warriors. And among the time zone warriors, we have um, uh, Jan. He is the IT director for a school in um, Holland, right, Dave? Yep. Um, we have um, Sean. Um, who is a uh, MP in the Air National Guard in Oregon. We have Steve, who is um, 
a network engineer for a major entertainment and electronics company who doesn't want me to name it. <laughs> Too much bad press. Um, and among others, and um, it's amazing that um, we have Flyer, Dave Wooderson here, who um, does some great work with Cert NL. So while we were all gamers, we have some people in our gaming community that are very dedicated to either security, um, IT. So it wasn't, among our community, there's a lot of, has been a lot of discussions about some of this stuff over the years too. So we weren't just banging on, you know, playing video games. And it's great to know that even now, that we don't do so much gaming anymore because some of our lives have changed, but we're still pretty much in communication about those things. Um, um, I should give a uh, shout out to um, Mike Wilson, to Little Fish, who's a CTO uh, and software developer in the UK, I meant to mention him. So then, what did I do? I went back to school. Yeah, but I should have done a long time ago and got the degrees to match the stuff that I was already doing. Um, that was great. Like I said, I was a CCBC competitor. Um, if you don't know what CCBC is, um, everybody here familiar with the CCBC concept? Um, it's a great, it's a great thing for young people, and if, even if you're too old now to go back to school, and I don't really believe that, but um, those schools that have CCBC competitions or, or teams would love the help of the community. Those people need mentors, they need instructors, they need people to help them learn from others in the industry. And there's schools that are just now starting to get into those programs because of the NSA's uh, movement to um, uh, build cyber education in college and in high school. And again, there's the high school program, Cyber Patriot. Um, I'm currently working with our CCDC team. I don't think I'll be competing this year because of my class load. Isn't, uh, I'm not a full-time student anymore, although I'm still taking classes. And I'm working with the Cyber Patriot team. So I encourage you to make those gestures. Well, also along the way, I thought I'd give a shout out to some other people. Um, for entertainment, I do things like listen to the Paul.com podcast, the Infosec Daily podcast, the IC podcast, um, Hack 5, uh, lots of others. I couldn't even, I've watched so many of them and listened to so many of them. Um, there's some great people out there doing great work, and they are trying to give back to the community. It's not that they're not trying to keep secrets, they're trying to share the information, and you got to applaud that. I have met much, Raphael Mudge, Armin Chacker, Dave Kennedy, um, Adrian Crenshaw. Adrian uh, came up for RISA a week ago this April, about a year and a half ago, yeah. right, right about a year and a half ago, came up to Fort Wayne to do a presentation for our ISSA chapter. Um, and we're hoping to have him back. My great friend Georgia, thank you for showing up this morning with we'll Miss Shoe Trouble. And I couldn't get an actual picture, but look, I have an almond sky out of the cell phone. <laughs> um, Georgia's work in smartphone security is amazing. And uh, the area that I live in has a large Amish population, and we see them on smartphones all the time. They're actually <laughs> using cell phones. And my philosophy is, this is such a big issue, it's even reaching the Amish now. So when you, when you hear Georgia talk about smartphone security, please remember this isn't a problem. This problem is now pervading all through um, societies, even down to people you wouldn't think. Um, that it's affecting. Um, a little about Georgia. As I said, I watch the Paul.com podcast. I um, listen to the IST podcast. While I was doing CCDC, I started doing research about what the other teams were doing, um, what the other teams had been involved in, how they practiced, what they did, and watching some of the videos from past competitions. And I came across um, this team that had Georgia on it. I'm like, oh, that's pretty amazing. And then, you know, it, but it didn't click in my head. And then one day, watching the Paul.com podcast, here's Georgia on there talking about smartphone security. I'm like, okay, well, wait. So she's not in college anymore. She's she's doing smartphone security, but she was a CCDC competitor. And then, you know, found out she had a website called Germ Noobs at the time, which now points you to her new website. But, uh, so I went and did some looking at Georgia's website, Germ Noobs, and of course she had some great material on there. And I'm like, well, we have a CCDC team. Georgia was really big at doing free classes for like uh, Novasec and a couple others. So I'm like, I wonder if Georgia would be willing to come out and talk to our CCDC team. So I reached out to her and she said, sure. And she said, all I really need is a place to sleep. All I need is a couch. And I was like, wait a minute, this is kind of amazing. You know, I'm asking this person to come from 
the East Coast at the time to come to Fort Wayne, and all she wants is a place to crash. She was going to come out and spend her time with us, uh, with our team, just to have a, she at least she had, she had a place to stay. So I bounced the idea back and forth to my team, and they were kind of leery. Who is this person, and why do we want to hear from her? I talked to my ISSA chapter about it. Who is this person, and why do we want to hear from her? My former department chair, Brian O'Hara, um, at Ivy Tech, who was also the faculty advisor for the CCDC team, uh, came down here to Derby Town with me last year and talked to Georgia and said, look, we'd like to propose that you not just come to talk to the CCDC team, but talk to our ISSA chapter too. And Georgia was very amenable to that in, uh, back in February. I think it was February. It was snowing. It was snowing. <laughs> in February, Georgia came um, and uh, talked to our ISSA chapter on Friday. She put together roughly four of her presentations. And I have a, give you a lot of credit. Most people come to a, a talk at a con and maybe spend 40, 45 minutes. She took roughly four of those talks and gave a half day presentation to an ISSA chapter. Um, and then she, the next day, she met with our CCDC team to talk to them about her experiences at CCDC, her experiences after CCDC, and was willing to answer questions, you know, what are potential career opportunities, you know, where might this lead? And so I got to give a big thanks to Georgia for the effort that she did in that part. So what that, all, what that brings me to here is the fact that I've gone to a number of conventions, and at every one of these conventions, I've met people that through one way or another, whether it's I have a question about something I'm doing at work, something I'm just banging on, something I'm trying to figure out, the people that I've met, if I reach out to them, they reply. Um, uh, DerbyCon last year, of course, Georgia, uh, Dave, and Adrian, uh, very welcoming. Uh, the philosophy that Dave uh, talked about last year at DerbyCon, was everybody here last year at DerbyCon? Anybody wasn't? I wasn't. Well, I know you weren't Dave. And, um, last year at DerbyCon, Dave made a point, I don't really believe him, but uh, Dave made a point that there are no rock stars in this industry. I don't really believe that because Dave coded artillery in three hours on a plane ride to Brazil, and I don't know too many people that can do something like that. But um, there are some great people that when you see them, you're like, man, how the hell do you do that? Um, he said this con is by the community, for the community, and it's about the community. And he kind of reiterated that a little bit yesterday. This con is all about family. It's all about sharing information. Nobody's, nobody's that much higher than everybody else. <coughs> So I went to ThoughtCon, met some more good people at ThoughtCon, went up to uh, BSET Chicago the next day, uh, quite a few great more people, um, among them uh, during that weekend, Alex Gotti, Natasha Keith, um, Rafal Lose, i have been listening to the White Rabbit and talked to Rafal quite a bit, but actually getting to sit down and have some time with him was pretty nice. And then at BSET Detroit, another great uh, conference, um, I got a chance to talk about something that had been kind of banging around in my head. At ThoughtCon and at BSET Chicago, I'd wanted to have a talk with Rafal because on Twitter, Rafal and I had bounced back and forth about he posed the question, do we have too many conferences? He says, I can go to a conference almost every single day. Well, he has a job where it lets him go to a conference every day. Most of us can't. Most of us have a day-to-day -day job and we can't do that kind of stuff. And so I uh, replied, I don't think we have too many conferences. I don't think we're reaching the right people. And thus, um, at B Sides Detroit, on the Down the Rabbit Hole podcast, instead of doing like a 45 minute podcast, we ended up doing almost two hours discussing that subject. The fact that we as a community, while these conferences are really great and we need to share this information, we need to go back out and share it with the people that it's important to in our communities, whether it's friends, family, coworkers, whoever it is, we need to get the information back out to them because they're, for the most part, they're not attending these conferences. At B Sides Cleveland, I got to actually present that talk. While we had the podcast, um, I got to put together a little more thoughts on it, make it a little more concise, and I gave a talk at B Sides Cleveland. It was wonderful, uh, the selection committee there. I thank Dave, because I thought Dave was on the selection committee for offering to me talk at, at B Sides Cleveland. He said, no, man. He says, I didn't have nothing, nothing to do with it. That was the selection committee, so I wasn't even on. So I, I have to give a, a great amount of thanks to the guys at B Sides Cleveland for selecting me to present there on a topic that means a lot. Um, 
How many people saw Jason's talk yes, last night? Uh, just, just a um, I kind of missed it because I had to go pick up George up at the airport. Uh, Jason started out his talk by talking about the same thing. There's a number of people in this community that have been uh, trying to uh, hammer the same point right now. For years, the um, belief in our community has been those stupid users. Stupid users. They don't know what they're doing, the stupid users. And Jason reiterated it last night. Um, it's not the user's fault. If the users are stupid, if they're not doing things securely, if they're not, if they're clicking on something they shouldn't be clicking on, if they're opening emails they shouldn't be opening, it's because we as a community haven't taught them or trained them better. And like he said, you can't just teach them to protect their data at work because your data at work doesn't mean anything to them. You have to teach them to protect their own data. You teach them to protect their own data that creates behavior that then comes back and allows them to be more secure at work. And that goes back to my talk at B-Size Cleveland, where I talked about the fact that we need to go back out to the community, we need to talk to high school students, grandmothers, we need to talk to housewives, whoever it is that actually influences their home networks, that will improve behavior to make them better at work. So the message that uh, I got out of all of this in the past few years is that between me and you and the community, we end up with better solutions, shared knowledge, and friendships. So we can do one of two things. Um, we can go about our day-to-day -day lives at work, or if you're just you know, banging on a project of your own, trying to solve your solution or solve your problems by banging on your head. Man, I can't get this. Something's wrong here, and I can't solve it. This piece of code isn't working. Um, uh, this package that I've downloaded um, isn't operating the way I thought it would. It's not getting it. Or you can reach out to the other people in the community and use collaboration to find the solutions. So at a lot of the other presentations here, you're going to see the presenters. They're going to have their websites on there. They're going to have their Twitter handles on there. They're going to have contact information on there. And my hope for you is that you don't ignore those. If somebody's Twitter handle is on there, it's because they put it there knowing that if you have a problem with something they're working on, or you have a question, or you just want to say, hey, man, Dave, what, what the heck when you really set 4.0? What the heck were you thinking, man? How the hell do you come up with all this stuff? That feedback lets them know that their projects are valued. So when they put that information up there, their Twitter handle, their website, their email, don't be afraid to reach out to them. Some people in the community go, man, that guy's not going to want to talk to me. He doesn't, you know, if I have a problem, he doesn't want to hear about it. He's going to go, man, I don't have any time for you. Well, here's what I want to tell you. This is what I've learned from all these people in the community. If you reach out to somebody, like one of these speakers, or even somebody in the audience, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, the odds are they will respond to you. 95% of the 10 the time they'll respond to you. If you send them an email, they may be traveling. They may be flying from Brussels. They may, may be a while for to get here. Um, it may take them a couple days. If they put their Twitter out there, um, I'm not going to promise that all of them will, but the majority of them, if you send them a tweet on Twitter, they will answer within hours, some of them within minutes. And it's amazing the fact that this community goes to those depths. That this community, especially the one that you're going to, the majority of people you'll see here at DerbyCon, especially the presenters who are taking the time, you'll find that those people really have an interest in sharing their knowledge. They're not just standing up on stage to be, you know, hey, look, I got 400 people in my audience. No, that's not, it doesn't matter to them. Because if you can't make it to this talk or you can't make it to that talk, the good thing is, is that Adrian and his guys are recording all the presentations and you can go back and watch it. If you think you missed something in a presentation, you can go back and watch it again. Please do not hesitate to reach out to those people. Um, they're, they're a very valued resource. Um, you may be able to get somebody like a Georgia to come to your town or come to your business or, or come to your ISSA chapter and talk about the research that they're doing. Um, and, and that's an incredible resource when you're trying to figure out um, for an ISSA chapter, how do we keep membership up? How do we uh, keep generating interest? Um, they don't want to hear the same people over and over again, maybe, or, or vendors. Um, better than vendors, why not get people who are actually doing the security research or working on the projects? So I, I'll come back to that again. Uh, yay, DerbyCon. Um, this is from uh, last year's DerbyCon 
uh, Derby Con page, and it's still on there. Um, Derby Con isn't just another security conference. We've taken the best elements from all the conferences. Derby Con is a place you can call home where you can meet each other, party, and learn. Um, the title of my talk was Nice to Meet You. I can't meet everybody here. I would love to meet everybody here, but I'm an introvert too, so I don't always go talk to some talk to people. But the people that you're sitting in the audience with at the presentations, take the time to meet the person sitting next to you. Find out what they're doing. Share contact information. Make sure you find out who the speakers were. I mean, you don't have to write down their, their Twitter handle or their, or their website address or the email if you don't want to, because like I said, Asia's doing a great job of recording the presentations. You can always go back and get that again if you need it. But reach out to those people in the community. Give back. They're giving to you. Please try and give back. And don't think that by giving back you have to do some kind of amazing security research and to get respect and honor from them. Like I said, a lot of it, if you just give them feedback on the projects they're working on, hey, man, that doesn't work. Or, you know, that was great. I'll give you an uh, example of that. When Dave first created artillery, um, I wanted to use it on our CCDC team during competition. I'm like, well, that's great. I can, you know, quick bang out the, the script for artillery um, and implement it on our boxes. And if the red team tries to scan us, boom, we can block with their IPs. Well, unfortunately, um, during the quick testing on that, Wait a minute, we're scanning our own network too. And um, that blacklists me. You know, now I'm just blacklisting my box and I'm scanning this. So I tweeted back to Dave, hey Dave, what about a whitelist? And um, it was like a day later, he said, okay, I uh, added a whitelist function to artillery now. It's in the new version. So it's not just, the, hey, you did a great job, but if you pointed out to them, have you looked at it this way? Have you done that? They appreciate that too. They appreciate the feedback. My contact information, again, James Osigo. I have uh, associates in the network administration. Um, I have my LPIC1, my Linux plus A plus, Netplus, Security plus. Those certs are great for HR. Um, my 30 plus years of experience is way more than any of those certs are ever going to show. Um, uh, I have my own website, both at Tech and Infosec, and tomorrow, uh, or Monday, GoDaddy promises me that I will, that I will have my abbreviation of an alias up there for uh, WFTIS.com will uh, be linking to it, and my email address. Um, I'd love to hear from anybody, um, but whether you reach out to me or not, please reach out to the other presenters at the com. Any questions or comments? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, George.